Hello, I'm Scott Florence, I have a new haircut and I have a new suit. This channel is really just me keeping you up to date with the latest science news and explaining some science. The Higgs boson has been in the news because instead of it being discovered by the end of 2012 like was expected, now it's assumed that it will be discovered by Christmas of this year. It was originally theorised in 1964 and it's expected to be discovered by the scientists at the Large Hadron Collider, which I'm going to in October. It was originally theorised in 1964 and to explain what it is I need to first explain what a Higgs field is. The Higgs field is a field that exists everywhere and it gives every particle mass. And what a Higgs boson is, which has been in the news, is it's a quantum of the Higgs field, just like a photon is a quantum of electromagnetic radiation. Incidentally, it is its own antiparticle, which basically means that the Higgs boson and its antiparticle are identical. Most physicists don't like the media's view on the Higgs boson, because the media puts much more emphasis on the importance of the Higgs boson. It does back up the standard model, but it still leaves many, many unanswered questions, such as the unification of quantum chromodynamics, the electroweak force, and gravity. Lately, space debris has been in the news because of the vast amounts of debris that's in orbit around our planet. Currently, there are more than 22,000 pieces of debris being tracked, and those are just the large ones. There's approximately half a million pieces between 1 and 10 centimetres, and tens of millions less than 1 centimetre. Now, even these 1 centimetre ones can be potentially fatal to anyone that's up in space, because all of this debris is moving extremely fast. All of this debris is up in space due to things such as the collisions of satellites, or satellites getting destroyed, and things getting lost from the space station. Back in 2007, China tested an anti-satellite weapon which left more than 150,000 pieces greater than one centimeter. And also a short while ago, a Russian and US satellite collided. Back in June, the space station narrowly missed a piece of space debris, and in true science fiction style, everyone on board had to rush to this escape capsule. Ordinarily, this wouldn't be an issue because gravity would ensure that this debris comes down. But currently, more debris has been going up then is coming down. All over the news they're calling around now the tipping point as far as space debris goes because of the ever increasing risk to anyone that's in space. Also, most of the debris would be expected to burn up in our atmosphere but there are even more larger pieces that wouldn't completely burn up orbiting Earth which would come down and collide with ground. Special relativity is Einstein's modification on Galileo's theory of relativity and what it basically is, is the physics of moving objects in relation to stationary objects. Now the key aspect of it is that the speed of light is constant, meaning it's the same for all observers, about 671 million miles per hour. To understand what this means, the best way to think of it is by imagining a light clock. A light clock being something that measures time by bouncing photons between two plates. And for every so many bounces, depending on the distance between the two plates, that's one second. Now when stationary, it just bounces up and down and everything is normal. But when it starts to move, the photon needs to travel further to reach each plate. Now if someone was to be moving along with this photon clock, they'd still see it as moving straight up and straight down, but someone else observing it would be seeing it moving diagonally up and down. What this means then is that the observer sees the photon clock as taking time slower than the person that's moving along with the photon clock. So time for the person who is moving with the photon clock is ticking more slowly. You can think of this using trigonometry so that the distance that the observer sees the photon clock tick is equal to the root of the height of the photon clock squared plus the speed of the photon clock multiplied by the time taken squared. Now the hypotenuse of this is going to be longer so time is slowed for the moving object. Also in special relativity it shows that the length of a moving object decreases and the mass of a moving object increases and all of this is in proportion to gamma and gamma is 
calculated by the root of 1 minus the velocity squared divided by the speed of light squared. Now if you take approximates for gamma when the velocity is very low, you can use approximations such as 1 divided by 1 minus a number that's very small is approximately 1 plus that number. And the root of 1 minus another number that's very small is approximately 1 minus half of the small number. Now when we're moving at low speeds in proportion to the speed of light, which for us has been all of the time, if you look at the mass increase, the usual equation is the mass of the moving object equals the mass of the stationary object multiplied by gamma. And that goes to the mass of the moving object equals the mass of the stationary object multiplied by 1 plus half of v squared over c squared. Now if you multiply all of that by the speed of light squared, you get the mass of the moving object multiplied by the speed of light squared equals the mass of the stationary object times the speed of light squared plus half of the mass times the velocity squared. Half of a mass multiplied by the velocity squared is kinetic energy. And as that's a type of energy, both of the other parts of the equation must be a type of energy. That means that the energy of a moving object equals the energy of the stationary object plus its kinetic energy. And before you know it, you've proved that the energy equals the mass times the speed of light squared of any object that is stationary. All comments are appreciated, so I'd like to thank MM Fire and BTR Messiah for their comments. Also, BTR Messiah is a good friend of mine and fellow YouTuber, so if you are interested in any of the Battlefield games, check out his channel which I'll link to you here. I'll be doing these every Monday, so please comment and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.